It should be quite the interesting space in the next year or two. We'll see. Welcome to the channel, everyone. Today I'm comparing two very different watches for outdoor enthusiasts, the Apple Watch Ultra and the Garmin Phoenix 7. In this comparison, I will give what I believe are selling points for each device and then choose a clear winner at the end for my needs. Before I jump into the advantages for both of these devices, I want to note that these are not inexpensive devices. You're spending around $1,000 Canadian, $1,100 Canadian. It's a lot of money. The good thing is, is that these devices will last a long time. And as far as running goes, you really don't have to spend a lot of money on big ticket items. Running shoes, yeah, they're not inexpensive anymore. You have to buy your nutrition, your clothing. But for me, coming from a triathlon background, running is actually pretty inexpensive. And I know everything is relative. As I mentioned, I will pick a winner at the end of this video for my needs. I'm not going to waffle back and forth. I'm going to come up with a clear-cut winner. And there's no room for second place in this video. First up, the Garmin Phoenix 7. Here are the pros to this device for endurance athletes. Number one, the build quality. Titanium case, check. Sapphire crystal screen, check. Tough as nails, check. Number two, the screen. It is a TFT, not an OLED screen, which makes it very easy to read in the sunlight. It's not a bright, vibrant screen like a cell phone or in the case of other smart watches, but it makes it very readable in bright light. Number three, buttons. Lots of them. Five buttons on the Garmin Phoenix. Buttons are really nice to have when you are a runner or if you're an outdoor enthusiast of any sort. It has a touch screen, but it has buttons, and buttons make it a lot easier to navigate through the different options. You don't have to worry about wet fingers, having mitts on, or gloves. You can still use buttons. That's another plus. Number four, mapping. Mapping is a very nice feature for those who get lost easily, whether you're in an urban environment, or for those who like to venture out into the wilderness, especially when you are away from cell phone signal. The ability to download pre-made maps for ultra running or to download GPX files when you're out hiking out in the mountains is a very nice feature to have. Don't rely on the mapping only. Always have a backup. Download maps onto your cell phone if you carry one with you. But mapping is a very nice feature for anybody who likes to venture out in the wilderness. Yeah, these are not huge screens like a cell phone or a tablet, but it is nice to have a screen showing you direction, where you're going, but also to have turn-by-turn -turn directions just in case you are the type of person who gets lost. It's a very nice feature to have mapping downloadable to the device. And pro number five for the Garmin Phoenix, the battery life. Yes, it does not have as good a battery as its bigger sibling, the 7X, or some other devices from Koros, but the battery on this, you don't have to worry about charging it every couple of days, charge it once a week, that's with heavy use. You can go easily two weeks with very minimal use. And the battery life with GPS recording is more than enough for most ultra marathons or long adventures. Next up, the Apple Watch Ultra. What are the pros of the Apple Watch Ultra? Number one, it's an Apple Watch. Well, what does that mean? Well, when you are in cellular range, it can be a standalone device. You can make phone calls. You can send and receive texts. You can use mapping with Apple Mapping, of course, not downloadable mapping, but Apple Maps. You can set a reminder to buy your spouse something nice because you spend so much time making content on YouTube. And if you're not doing that, you're out doing crazy adventures. Well, that's my case anyways. You can use contactless payment right on your device without having a cell phone handy. And you are locked into the Apple ecosystem. A lot of people in North America specifically use Apple devices. So that's a nice integration between the watch, your phone, tablet, computer. It's a seamless integration between these devices. Number two, the battery life. For an Apple Watch, the battery life is very good. You're going to get one and a half, possibly two times the amount of battery life as you do with a regular Apple Watch. Does it rival other devices? Not at all, but you basically have a computer strapped to your wrist. Something to consider. Number three, the build quality. Same as with the Garmin Phoenix, you have sapphire crystal display, you have a titanium case, 
And this thing is bulletproof as well. So we have a check, a check, and a check with this. Number four, a beautiful OLED screen. Can get very bright, quite easy to read in direct sunlight. Not quite as good as the TFT display, but it is a very nice, bright, clear display. For someone like me with my eyes, it's really nice to look at. Number five, the siren. The siren is a nice safety feature to have on this device. I haven't had to use it yet, which is a good thing, and I hope I never have to use it. I always carry a backup whistle or two, but the siren is a nice feature to have, built right into the watch. And number six, fall detection. When you're within cell phone range, fall detection is nice to have. I used to have an Apple Watch 7 a couple of years ago, and I actually put it to use. I fell quite hard. It detected my fall. It went to call emergency services, which I did not need because I was actually about 100 meters from my home when I fell, slipped on some ice. But it does work, and it's nice to have as a safety feature. Okay, now on to the winner. But before I announce what I believe is the winner for me, it would be a big win for me if you could hit that subscribe button if you find this video entertaining and or useful in any way. Really helps out the channel. Here we go, drum roll please. Although the Apple Watch Ultra is a very nice first step into making watches for ultra endurance athletes, I'm gonna go with the Garmin Phoenix 7 every single time I'm out in the mountains. And here are the reasons why very quickly. Number one, the battery. Battery lasts a lot longer than this. You don't have to worry about charging it as often. Number two, buttons. It is so nice to have five buttons. Yes, the Apple Watch has three buttons, but having those extra two buttons on the device are very nice to have. And advantage number three is mapping. When I'm out in the backcountry anywhere, the ability to download a map onto this device and have turn-by-turn -turn directions, it is a very nice feature to have. That's why the Garmin Phoenix 7 is the winner for me. I'm quickly going to go back to my earlier analogy about second place. This is a very good first attempt for Apple going into the ultra endurance marketplace. Now I know all the marketing hype, they have Scott Jurek and Ray Zahab and they have all these different adventure people promoting this product, that's marketing. But this is a first attempt at a device like this with a few more firmware tweaks extend the battery life on this possibly. The hardware is there, they just have to catch up with the software. Mapping, it can be done I believe, but it's not there yet. If they can open this up to developers or they themselves allow you to download GPX files onto this device, that would be a massive next step for Apple. And if I were the other companies, I'd be worried because Apple has a lot of resources to put into something like this. And this is a pretty darn good first attempt. Second place, I would imagine they're gunning for the Garmin's of the world. It should be quite the interesting space in the next year or two. We'll see what Apple has to do. Garmin, you take the win in my book, Phil. That's a wrap, everyone. Thanks for watching, and get outside.